Welcome to life, bringing you insight and experiences into love, relationships, and fertility with a focus on enjoying life and moving forward. On today's podcast, we'll be speaking with Jess Feist. She is the co-chair of this year's Resolve Federal Advocacy Day. Welcome to Life, Love, Insight, Fertility Experiences. Today, I am here with Jessie Feist, and I am so excited that she's here. She is the co-chair of Resolve's Federal Advocacy Day. A pleasure to have her here today to talk about how she became involved in taking on this role, which is huge. So just thanks so much for being here today. Thank you so much, Laura. This is an honor. I'm excited to be here. Oh, please. My honor. So how do we start this? I was thinking that it might be great for people to hear a little bit about you and how you became involved. Sounds good. Well, um, I uh, joined the field of third party reproduction family building about six and a half years ago. And I uh, uh, entered as a specialist for um, surrogacy and egg donor uh, program support. And I don't know if you've ever met a gestational surrogate before, but they're just about the coolest women in the whole world. And they were incredibly inspiring. They're the kind of women that were just like, hey, I've had good luck. How can I pass it along? How can I pay it forward? Right. And that was just it's it's really contagious to be around and it's exciting. So I asked my husband, hey, can so I reading, right? when people think about surrogacy, they, they have so many preconceived notions oh, about yeah. it. And I found that actually when I got to go to Albany to advocate that there's very, very mixed feelings. And I was so excited when the law was changed in New York and it took so long for that law to be changed. Highlight of COVID is the, the New York surrogacy uh, uh, change. Yeah, we're thrilled about it. There are a lot of misconceptions with the community, the surrogate community themselves. They're just the best women in the whole world. Um, and I'm honored to call, uh, you know, a couple dozen of them, my honest, you know, goodness, close friends. And they were, they inspired me. They are the ones that inspired me. Um, so I asked my husband if I could do, you know, what do you think of that? And he's maybe not so much. And uh, so I was like, okay, well, I really want to do something. I want to, I want to light a candle in the darkness the way these women have. And um, so I, I was like, whoa, how about I start doing more uh, with Resolve? And so I attended my first um, advocacy day um, five years ago. Five years ago. Wow. And mm-hmm. what did you do for your first advocacy day? Did you go to the state or did you go federal or how did you I, do that? So I went to our, my first, my first event was federal. I, I live in Northern Virginia. So I went straight to DC and of course I was incredibly intimidated and nervous. And I, it, they're usually, uh, when it is in, in DC, it's a, sort of a fancy um, hotel conference room. And sometimes it's sort of a, sw- a swanky and, you know, lots of doctors walking around and lots of people looking really sharp and, you know, talking in and all of that vocab and acronyms that I, acronyms, part of me, that I was just still kind of getting the hang of. And I was like, oh dear, am I supposed to be here? Is this? And um, I, I was just, I was excited and overwhelmed. I remember I turned to the woman next to me and I said, are you, a, are you a professional? And she said, yes. And I was like, great, we're going to be buddies. And of course she <laughs> I thought I meant, are you a professional <laughs> generally? And um, she, uh, I went like in the field and it turns out uh, she, she was a lobbyist. And uh, she she was an aviation lobbyist. Jen became a close friend of mine. And um, we hung out throughout the day and, and spoke with our lawmakers. And it was just a really great sort of crash course in renewing my empathy for the family building and infertility community because, um, it you know, you get to know them, you eat lunch with them, you struggle with them, and you have all these like beautiful small moments. So it was a really cool first experience. Yeah, you know, I have to share a little bit about my first experience because it was really it was, it was wild. You know, I went, I had interviewed Risa Levine, who was the, I don't know, maybe one of the founders in advocacy, right? For fertility. She's amazing. She embarked talking about it. And she so inspired me that I thought, oh my goodness, I have to do this. I received an email from, from somebody at Resolve saying, would I like to go to advocacy day in Albany? And this is right before the lockdown came with COVID. So I was there in early March and what a day. It was amazing. I was, I was really nervous, honestly, when you first walk in, because it's so intimidating. But then yes. you realize how empowering it is to be able to explain things to people who really yes. don't necessarily understand your perspective or have the background and the depth and the scope of knowledge that you want them to have to make a decision. Yes, I agree. It's, it's, it's so empowering to be able to 
go to lawmakers and say, hey, I'm in this. I'm in this is my personal experience or I'm in this field. And please allow me to share my understanding with you. And it's, it's really interesting because a lot of our lawmakers haven't had an updated understanding of how you know, uh, the bodies, bodies work or infertility or, or struggles since, you know, eighth grade health class. And so a lot of the times we're just sort of reviewing some of the basics at first, like, oh, this is how it, um, but they're always very receptive and excited to hear from us. And it's just beyond, beyond being an advocate and, and sharing your story and feeling like you're making a change. It's like a field trip and uh, a, a, a friendship, you know, gathering. And it's just a big really exciting um, experience and it's addicting. Once it's, you go, you go. And it's energizing. The yes. thing that's so amazing to me though is one in eight, right? One in eight people are touched by infertility. That number is actually almost a little bit higher if you round up the statistic as opposed to like leveling it off. And the interesting thing is that means that so many of our lawmakers are touched by this yet we don't normalize it. We don't necessarily bring it out. And so Advocacy Day allows you to tap into that. Absolutely. It's one in eight. And it's, uh, it's I remember calling it an, uh, an epidemic before COVID, right? Like this was uh-huh. the first epidemic that it, it's, a, it's, it's prevalent. And I'm so sorry for the background noise. I'm at home. And so my neighbor is doing their lawn. I do apologize for that. I actually don't hear it, so it's fine. Oh, good. I'm so glad. My phone rang before, so. Okay. (laughs) Sorry about that. But you're so right, Lori. There are so many times where we go to an office and we're talking about adoption rights and we're talking about one in eight and family building challenges. And almost always there's someone in that office that says, I have a personal connection with this as well. And this is one of those opportunities where if you're in the struggle, if you're having, you know, one of those moments where you're waiting for your, uh, you know, your two week wait, or you just got bad news. Advocacy day and advocacy work is a way to take the power back and to put your pain to a purpose and to say, okay, I am not pleased with what's happening, but I'm going to connect with a group of folks who are going to make it actionable and make this hurt um, a uniting source for good. And that's one of the exciting parts of advocacy. It is. We were talking about that, right? Because fertility is a disease. It is an illness and we have to recognize it as such. It's not that, you know, you're not good enough or not that you made a mistake. It's that it's an illness, just like any other illness. The beauty of this illness is that there are so many options today that we can take control over in terms of choice, but we can't take control over an illness necessarily. So this loss of control is really horrible for people going through this journey, as with any illness. And Advocacy Day allows you to take some control. Now- Absolutely, absolutely. We have a great partner, um, Resolve uh, has a great partner, uh, Art of Infertility, who would have an exhibit oftentimes uh, maybe the cocktail hour before advocacy day when we would do in-person events and they would show artwork of folks who were going through this, what is an isolating event and, um, or, you know, historically has been, and I, I'm hoping that through their work and a lot of other um, wonderful professionals work and micro influencers and people just talking about it more on social media um, that it's going to just become normal. And I remember my, I think my second advocacy day where the president, the then president of um, of uh, American Society of Reproductive Medicine got up and said, you know, much like breast cancer, much like liver disease, much like all of the, and, you know, listed off all of these uh, illnesses and diseases, which had similar rates of infection. And he says, and yet where's this, you know, where's the support for infertility? So I think once we, that's usually one of our starting lines as an advocate, as we say, infertility is a disease. And so it, you know, it requires and demands the respect or deserves the respect of every other medical condition. This isn't a, a cultural or socioeconomic, it's, you know, it, infertility doesn't care how much you make or what, what your background is. It, it affects across all, um, you know, demographics and, it, and it's um, not something, as you said, that anyone could control or, or they caused. Right. No, absolutely not. I just bought the t-shirt that Resolve sells actually that says infertility does not discriminate because it doesn't. There's no discrimination when it comes to this. And um, it is considered when you go through the emotional journey as with any chronic illness. And so when you do seek support or if you do seek therapy, it's important to seek therapy or support with people who are familiar with fertility because otherwise they may think that your emotions are a little bit more exaggerated than on a normal 
normal range, but this is normal. And so when you go to advocacy day, what we're doing is we're not only helping to change and create change of policy, we're also kind of giving to ourselves and empowering ourselves. And, and that is fabulous. And it is addicting. I do agree with you. It definitely <laughs> is. And there's work that goes on for um, advocacy day, which is you know, you're in the throes of right now. And there are so many different committees that people can join. And even after the day, there's things that have that require follow up and, and continuation. So if somebody wanted to get involved, and wanted to kind of get this natural high from going to advocacy, <laughs> what would they do? How would they do it? Well, I'd say the first step is attend your first advocacy day. If you've never attended, make sure you register by June 3rd and see what it's all about. Now this year it's virtual again, and you'll just, you'll get to experience uh, working with the state captain who will organize you and make certain that everyone knows, you know, what we're, what we're all talking about and who's going to say what, and you'll get that experience of being part of the team and you'll get that first. I have to interrupt you. Oh yes. When you say virtual, I was like last year. Oh my God, how are they going to do this virtually? I actually even put it in like this outreach letter that I just sent to people. I was, I was kind of like, this is crazy. And then all of a sudden they asked me, we weren't even on Zoom, we were on the telephone. And I think somebody asked me if I would start off the call start off the call like how do I <laughs> do that and then pass it along to somebody but it worked for some reason it absolutely worked and the person on the other phone was on the other line they were receptive and they were interested and it's it's important to recognize that advocacy day involves every community so it involves children that need to be adopted. It involves um, the LGBTQ community. It involves everybody, honestly. Absolutely. And it's it, a nonpartisan event. It's a non resolves a nonpartisan organization, nonprofit. And it's not a day of political party or political affiliation. It's a day of coming together for what we call pro-family legislation, pro-family building. And just as you said, it can sometimes touch, often we have um, a bill that we're advocating for that touches on um, adoption rights or, uh, you know, adoption credit, um, LGBT access to family building, and a lot of veterans work. We do a lot of work about people who, for so in support of individuals who have lost their fertility uh, due to uh, service-related illness or injury, which I cannot imagine a group more worthy of federal legislation support yeah. and building their families. I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer, right? Like, yes, absolutely. If you've lost your fertility or family building ability, you know, in the act of your country, yes, we should help you. Um, so it's, there are a wide uh, range of pro-family um, uh, issues that we support and you learn, you, you go through and you go, oh, wow, I, I knew I was excited about this and oh, there's a little bit more to learn. And I, I know it can sound intimidating too, because this is, you know, I've been doing it a couple of years. I learn a little bit more each year, but if it's your first year, it's okay to have not aced all of your civics classes or not thought about the, the House and the Senate in a while. That's all right. We have a cram session the night before and some education well in advance. But if you're type A who wants to know all the details, we've got lots of details for you too. We'll take you as you come. And absolutely, it's just a very exciting time to then meet the other people um, on that phone call with you and um, or on that screen with you who also really care about it. And as a professional who supports the uh, family building community, I know for me, this has been, and no shame in it at all, this has been a really exciting networking opportunity for me to meet other people who care as deeply as I do. And for me to go, hey, what do you got going on? And you, you talk amongst yourselves and you learn and you strengthen that network. I would definitely encourage anybody who's new or who has been in the field for a little bit and have never tried Advocacy Day to just join in this year to see what it's all about because um, it's easier than ever because it's virtual. Um, and we're excited about the virtual. We're hoping to get 450 attendees this year, which would be a, a wonderful record. And again, for the second time, have attendees from all 50 states, which we did for the first time last year. So that's it's very really exciting. exciting. So let me ask you, 450 people all online, like how do people really get their voices heard? Can you tell people that so that they really understand why, even though that number sounds big, their voice matters? Sure, certainly. Okay, so everybody has um, 
two Senate uh, lawmakers, and then you have a representative that represents you, right? So in your Senate meeting, if you're from a state like myself, like Virginia, I'm from Virginia. So when I go into my Senate meeting, there's a lot of us and it's like, hi, Senator, and maybe you'll talk, maybe you won't. And it's, but it's just cool to be in the room and to learn. Um, but then when you go to your uh, representative meeting, it might be just you or, or, well, there'll always be someone with you if it's your first time, I want to say that. And it may be one or other two folks there because they're in the same um, community as you. Um, and so that's, that's the reason why we need a lot of folks is there's a lot of, and I should have looked this up before. I know Joe, my co-chair, he would know exactly how many representatives. Um, I don't I think what you said before is like so important. Honestly, just, I think that just people being seen, even if they're not talking, says something. And I it, think that's communicating too, because I always go into this thing that we communicate through our five senses and being seen and just looking at the number is almost as impactful and something you take away almost sometimes more than the words of what somebody's telling you, especially if you're not a hundred percent clear on the words. And absolutely. I absolutely being in that room means something being there on means. that call means something. Absolutely. Yeah. And so that's really, I think, so important to take away. So if anybody has any um, any questions or any desires or even really wants to get a little bit more involved, they can go ahead and register um, on Resolve. I, for personal reasons, must say, when you register, make sure you respond to the confirmation email because I was not registered and I thought I was. So I, I, I would, me too. It's, you it's a two-step it. process and yeah, absolutely. I went through the same thing. So, but yes, please register by June uh, 3rd and find out more about it. If you're interested at all, again, this is the year to do it. And we're so excited to have you. We're ready for new attendees. Um, I would say historically, we have about 50% folks who identify as patients or people with personal stories about family building struggles, challenges, and solutions. And then the other 50% are folks who support that community. So those are doctors, those are nurse practitioners, those are third party um, family building professionals such as myself and mental health professionals. And so all are welcome. We also have some really great sister or allied organizations, Broken Brown Egg, Family Equality, lots of great organizations that come and show up. Um, PCOS Challenge, they do great work with us and we advocate, um, co-advocate for uh, different legislation together, so. And the beauty of professionals and, and people going through the experience coming together really gives the full story. Full story, I love it. Legislators always can say, if there's not one of, one of each in the room, they can say, oh, I don't know if the patients are gonna like what this professional is advocating for, or I don't know what, you know, the other way around. But if we're in there together saying, yeah, what she says, yeah, what he says, we're together on this, that's a really powerful statement. And yeah. again, it's just so wonderful as a professional to come face to face with your, you can sometimes get isolated in these moments and forget, you know, it can get siloed and you go, oh yeah, these are the people I'm here to serve. And it's just a really invigorating, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people are tap dancing in the airport afterwards. Cause it's just really, it's just exciting to, and you, you, you ride the high for several days after. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. It really is. And it doesn't have to stop if there's stuff that still has to go on. So um, the only reason why I'm pushing that is because to me, when you say something, you've got the message across, and then we want to follow up and make sure that we get that law of change. And it could take years of uh, continuing to, to follow up on it. So just thank you so much for thank being you. here today. This is such, such a, a great. And we're wearing our orange in honor of, of Resolve, which the color is orange. I, am, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sourced it, but I know that's the color for National Fertility Awareness. Um, so yes, proud to wear my orange and proud to support one and eight. And I just want to say whether you're one or eight, one and eight, or you're the seven and eight, I hope you show up for our advocacy day and help us make the 450. Registration closes June 3rd, but the event is June 17th, 2021. And we would be absolutely thrilled to have you there. Um, do yourself a favor and come and attend and learn what it's all about. So thank you so much, Lori. Thank Appreciate you. It. If somebody wants to get involved, they can go to resolve.org. Absolutely. And, Register right on there. Yep. Okay. And if anybody has any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to me at laurimetz.net.